apparently we've got to be a little bit careful around here because there are snakes. So I'm going to be avoiding the snakes, obviously. Uh, here we are, we're at the uh, abandoned playing graveyard in Rangenheng. Uh, this one here is a 747. See the livery on the side of it. Now, Orient Thai received this plane in December 2006 from Japan Airlines. They received it from Boeing in March of 1986. So it's a pretty old plane. It looks like Orient Thai Airlines. They put it into their low cost carrier, which is 12Go. It can be seen flying in this picture in about 2007. Then you can see it's flying again with the Orient Thai logo in 2009. So they switched it over then. Probably because of the crash that occurred in 2007. I think they're trying to save some face. See that? Now this has been here for quite a few years. Um, I've been wanting to come here for, I don't know, maybe five, six years. I used to always see it when we drove past. There's a lot of stories about this place. But the main story seems to be this. The land was owned by some rich Thai dude. They wanted to build a condominium and that deal fell through. In order to make some money from his investment, he's used the land and his connections to make money from a plane scrappage scheme. The first couple planes here were a 747 and they've been pretty much gutted. There's a lot of expensive stuff on these planes, so it can be quite profitable. At one point it was waiting to be transported somewhere else in Bangkok to be used as some kind of funky bar. So just gonna go and have a little look inside now, just coming through the cargo bay doors. And as you can see, there's a lot of scrappage materials here. This is the inside where all the luggage would have gone. This is the inside of the doors. Okay, see all the pneumatics in there to keep the door shut. Loads of mosquitoes as well. I might need to put some mosquito spray on in a minute so I don't get dengue fever. Uh, so let's have a look inside. What else was this? It's in here, there's lots of bags. Watch your head. Part of the doors. It's wiry. That's really quite exciting. So there's an audio control panel there. Flap delay monitor. It's pretty cool. Everything's been gutted. So they've been selling a lot of this stuff. Oh, we've got to be careful there. I almost went down this hole. Almost down there. There's a ladder there. It seems secure. All right, let's have a look. Let me just. Sure there's no snakes near my head. You can see all the overhead lockers here. So, a lot of their other planes are in storage. I don't know why this one was chosen to be scrapped. Maybe because it was the oldest one. You can see the insulation there. All the construction inside. And all the overhead compartments. Well, that scared me. This photo was taken when the plane was still Japan Airlines, and it was in 2006. It was taken in Tokyo Haneda International Airport in Japan. So let's have a look. So there is a really interesting plane on this land. Uh, which we're going to have a look at soon, which was actually involved in a, an air disaster back in 2007. Um, so we'll look at that in a minute. Come back to that. Let's have a look out this door. But you can't do this uh, in a real plane. Nice little way to spend your Monday morning. Ah, look, look at this. So I heard a guy talking about this and apparently um, this may have been one of the planes which they used to test the maiden voyage into Don Juan. But apparently the guy who uh, he lived here, he used to be a blogger, he said he flew on a plane which had exactly this patterning inside of it 
and then years later he came here and he saw this exact same plane and he thinks it may actually be the same plane that he flew on. So cool. It's storage. That looks like a beehive. Lots of people been here. Some Russians. Kaczynski. That was pretty cool. That's where all the food would have been stored. So this photo was taken from seat 25J, Orient Thai flight OX203 from Hong Kong International Airport to Bangkok. So apparently upstairs that would normally have been first class or business class but with this particular airline the one that we think it is they convert it to economy class or coach as they say in america open the door Kate. you might fall off the hinges though so be careful it looks looks very secure oh gosh yeah it's tied on with little metal wires Careful your footing. Upstairs. Might that's, be. That's the nose, right? Oh, right. Kate, you know, there's more than I do. Gosh, imagine that. Reminds me of the forest. What are these bad boys? Those trolleys. Oh, secure the trolleys in place. And there's, you can see that they were here. So that's part of the galley as well. It's amazing. I mean, it's just amazing that something like this can be abandoned, that now it's kind of worthless, really. Yeah, Should have been a stewardess. What do you mean? They, they apparently they sold a lot of the trolleys because they were in good condition and they can they, they fit into all the 747 compartments that were still being used when they scrapped it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Should we go upstairs? Come on. You test the stairs for me. So I don't think I've actually been in a 747 before. Like a, I think this might be my first time. There is a cockpit. Watch out for snakes, yeah. Um, so there's a guy down there sleeping, look, bless him. So yeah, that looks like one of the parts from the McDouglas planes, uh, the MD, I can't remember, I'll have to look it up in a minute. But that looks like part of the one which may have been involved in that air crash, the, the tail section. A few years ago, you could see a lot of the pieces had fire damage still, uh, but I think they've since removed those pieces. Someone's been doing some algebra. Beauty from ashes. Bit of algebra. Looks like a few people sleep in here as well, look. If they need it. So we'll try and be uh, respectful. These, what, these are all part of the ventings, I guess. A few years ago, you could still find the oxygen masks as well, but they seem to have gone now. Open one of the overhead lockers, Kate. Let's hope something drops out. Ah, oh, it's still got its, uh... just find a skull in there or something. Uh. <laughs> what is that? Okay. No. I think somebody's left some of their uh, items. Let's close it again. Oh. What will happen if I pull that? Maybe I shouldn't. I might fly off. It's amazing. Imagine getting this close to an airplane. You never get a chance to do this anywhere obviously when you're on a plane but not not seeing the insides of it 
That's an old screen there, look. Television screen or something. Tint projector? Is that projector? projector look. Ah, so what, it would project onto a screen that came down? This would come down, I think. Ah, so this would pop down. I don't think it's gonna come down anymore. I mean, I don't wanna damage it. Um, yeah, so there'd be a projector there, come down onto a screen. All these windows. Grade PC form, APM thermoplastics. Just wondering if you can find some kind of serial number somewhere. Or... For um, this plane. Just see all this graffiti on here. Take me deeper, Lord. Is that they're both toilets? Maybe. Do you think this can still be used? Uh, look that. That Looks like somebody's been smoking in it. That used to be a sink. That's the basin. Right? Yeah, basin over there. It even still has like that plain kind of smell. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? The toilet, toilet. plane smell. Yeah. Yeah, it has that unique toilet on a plane smell. Crazy. So here we are now, entering the cockpit. So all this racking that would have had electrical goods in. What would that be? The the guy who sits at the back, I can't remember, the jump seat, that's the jump seat. Yeah, that's the jump seat there. Escape hatch, they put some kind of metal there to stop people climbing out. People must be climbing on the roof and taking selfies. Oh, too bad. Wow, this is cool. Look at this. Have you ever been in a 747? Uh, what I'm flying it on, no. All the controls yeah, here. The Control the flaps there. The throttle. Still moves. Wow, look at that. No idea what that means. Oh, wow. Maybe I buy that from them. That's so cool. Imagine if it just started up. You've got foot pedals as well. Yeah, some foot pedals. Yeah, there's foot pedals down there. Definitely can't see much out of these windows. Considering how long this plane's been here, it's sort of a testament to how well they're made, isn't it? Considering it's still got Everything. a strong floor. I guess it's because it's all aluminium, right? So it's less. Are these original floors? Um, they probably obviously put boards over, but what I mean is, is like, generally speaking. So this rudder pedal adjustment. been loads of overhead buttons here at one point since been removed there's lots of religious writing around here graffiti yeah like jesus died for you it's weird why would religious people congregate here i have no idea what's this thing oh cool So what's this do? This would have done something. No idea. Parking brake. This is really cool. You I really want it. Over there, they put like lights to indicate uh, certain things. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. So we've been the um, control deck here. With all the different things like the autopilot. You've got still buttons up here. 
to adjust the glide slope and fix it. Ground proximity tests. So when the, they were doing all their flight checks to make sure everything's working. And you've got all of this like fiberglass cladding, fire prevention insulation. Here you've got some of the comms they would have used, radio controls. Yeah, so this was very much more of a still a mechanical. If you see all these bits here, this is all very sort of old school now. A lot of it is computer. But there would have been a loads of switches and wires and all sorts here. Up here there would have been um, some of the emergency equipment like smoke goggles, um, potentially uh, oxygen masks here, uh, and a microphone would have connected here so they could still communicate. Up here would have been all the books for the different procedures, uh, like starting procedures, uh, different emergencies, things like that. Have a look, see if I can. See the jump seat here with the old seat belt there, still attached. Wonder how many flights. Apparently there was one estimate that this plane probably took about 1 million passengers roughly before it was um, scrapped. A million passengers. So cool. I could spend all day just in this room. What was that noise? Or is it right and pen? Just with marker pen. Uh, so they've numbered the panels when they'll put it together with marker pen. And so that was probably what in America? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a Boeing. So I'd assume it was constructed in America. So there's some American dude's handwriting there that he wrote maybe 32 years ago, I believe. Maybe longer. Probably longer now. I think this might be from the 70s, late 70s. Sure. It's hard to tell without any identifying things. If you can see any dates on any of the materials, you know, so like. Ah, 1985. So this is October the 38th, 1985. I mean, that might have been a refurbishment, but this is when the windows were made. 1985. Wasn't even born then. that bad boy there. Oh oxygen, so this would have been an oxygen carrier that went under the under a seat. The oxygen would slide in there. I don't know what that bit would have been, maybe some kind of connective device. So would it have been first class? Uh, originally it would have been first class and business class. But apparently a lot of these airliners, they just, they made this into um, economy class as well. As they, uh, the airlines got older. Awesome. That's cool. Get a scratch, tetanus. I think this is the original flooring, you know. Oh, 
Right, should we make our way down? Let's see if we can go and have a look at some of the other planes. Oh, there's a bird right there. Hello, birdie. Just scared the hell out of me. It's no worry, mate. You see all the wires that would control the different parts of the plane. All the pulleys, springs, and fly by wire plane. Oh, see ya. Where have you gone? Stuck there. Oh, oh crap. I forgot about the hole. So you can see that somebody's sleeping in here, there's like hammocks and things. Chickens don't like the rain very much. Just taking it easy. So this is a tray table. Safely stowed there. Some of the uh, window bits to cover the windows. A few oxygen masks there. Well, this would have been the under carriage, the landing gear, the front wheels, the landing gear. Whoa! Look at that. Mechanism there. These doors will have opened. Loads of power. With this pneumatic system here. Hydraulic, most likely, actually. I think this might be a bee nest in here. Yeah, I think. Well, either that's a massive mosquito or a bee's nest. Awesome. So this would have dropped out. So on the 16th of September 2007, uh, one to go Airlines Flight 269 crash landed in when landing in Phuket, International Airport. Um, it was a McConnell McDouglas MD82 plane which had been sold on to this airline, uh, which was a subsidiary of something called Orient Air, and it crashed due to a combination of factors. At first they thought it was to do with wind shear and the pilot's decision to land during poor conditions but it actually turned out it was uh, due to pilot error. Uh, they began to land and as they came in and descended uh, they wanted to do a go around. A go around is when you take back off. You've probably seen planes do this. You might have been on a plane which has done this in the past. It's quite intimidating but quite a r routine thing to do. Uh, pilots are very well trained to do this. What happened is, is as the plane descended and they wanted to do a go around, um, they retracted the uh, undercarriage, the landing gear, and and uh, put the nose up. However, they had failed to engage the go around procedure, which is like a button that you click, which re-engages the engines. And so, what happened is, is it start to uh, start to slowly increase the altitude to about couple hundred feet um, it started to lose uh, lift because its speed had heavily uh, decreased and um, so it started to lose altitude and, and stall and so they did re uh, reinstate the engines but about three seconds before it hit the ground it was far too late then and I believe about 80 odd people of the 130 odd people on board died five crew members uh, most most people were foreigners um, and why do I tell you this story? Well, because apparently one of the planes here which is being scrapped was actually from that crash. And up until a few years ago, uh, you could still see some of the burnt out charred remains. So this is a McDouglas airplane here. You can see its wing. And this is probably from the middle section. Uh, obviously, because that's where the wing is. And over here is from the tail. 
apparently there used to be two of these so I don't know where the other one's gone uh, but you can see here this is the tail section of a McDouglas airplane yeah, there would have been some livery on the side there it's since been painted over some very very long grass in between me and the airplane that makes me a little bit cautious because the, there's a number of snakes in this area but uh, I might just go ahead anyway in here if I was a snake where would I be okay this is really not a good idea yeah snakey snakey snake survived I got into the plane oh wow there's mosquitoes everywhere little birds nests loads of pillows is it raining now a lot, a lot. oh there's a there's a old oxygen mask there look let's see if I can grab that <clears throat> old oxygen mask Open your mouth and nose breathe deeply Calmly. Alright, that's cool. Let's have a look inside of here. So, this is the tail section of the plane. It's really narrow back here. This must have been, I don't know, uh, an emergency exit. Yeah, it's got an exit written there. So, there must have been an emergency exit at the back of the plane. Just gotta be careful, there's no snakes. I'm putting my hand. Okay, so there's loads of uh, ducting and things like that. That was part of the APU, I think, the pressurization unit, which would help contain, to control, sorry, the pressure inside of the plane. Okay, I'm just gotta look around. There's the bathrooms here. I think it's gonna be like Indiana Jones when he moves a rock and a big snake just comes out. So this would have been entering the main part at the back of the plane. Whoa. Oh, I'm feeling dizzy. Makes me feel I'm in a bad plane crash. Loads and loads of oxygen containers here. There's a bathroom there, I'll have a look at that on the way out just in case I disturb something. Living. Some of the vents and lighting. Oh. Wow. This is trippy. For crew use only. Number 37. Sitting at the back of the plane there. The worst seats on the plane. Okay, let's see. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh. So cool. There would have been an exit there. Part of the overhead lockers. Nice. Be a hole there. Careful. Yeah, and part of the wing. Yeah, so I mean, let's have a look. See, see what it says over here. Assembly and um, product inspection. Let's see if we can find some numbers somewhere. Yeah, so the plane's absolutely been gutted, isn't it? Yeah, there used to be a lot of charred remains and I just wonder where they are now. They must have got rid of them or they may be somewhere in the over undergrowth, hidden. I'm sweating my ass off. It's so hot. Plus it's kind of exciting. A lot of adrenaline flowing here. Partly because, I mean, I, this is really cool. Really interesting place. But also just worried about cutting myself or getting bitten or something. Plus you just feel like you shouldn't be here, you know? It's weird. So imagine all the feet that walked along these carpets. These are probably the original carpets here. Yeah, they're stuck down. All this cladding in there. It's insulation. Assembled in Mexico. Assembled in Mexico. So just maybe these were imported and assembled. Somewhere else. Uh, 
think we saw somewhere that it was assembled in Ontario, Canada. So obviously different parts of the plane coming from different areas, which is quite common practice these days. Or well, maybe even back then. Yeah, let's have a look. Apparently it's vacant, which is good. Don't want to disturb anybody. But let's have a little look, see if. Ooh. So I don't know if you can see that, but this is an old toilet. Still has that toilet smell. There's a Snoopy down there. Up there. Wow. Just make sure you don't do any smoking in the lavatory, guys. Get a fine. Still a mirror there. Yeah, so I don't know if you can tell, but this whole plane is out of swift. Just imagine the fear if you have to try and get off one of these things. Warning, if decal punctured, notify captain immediately. Looks punctured to me. Doesn't look good. Yeah, so this is a pretty important part of the aircraft. Did hear about one of the uh, back of one of these planes one time getting a tail strike. A tail strike is when it lands and it hits the tail first and causes damage. And so it went away for repair and they didn't do a repair job properly. And basically at the back there would be this disc and um, one of the rivets was missing. So when it was pressurizing and depressurizing, pressurizing and depressurizing again and again and again, eventually um, the back of the plane blew off. Some kind of mechanism here. Let's exit. Warning for maintenance support tail cone. Support tail cone before pulling handle. Inside lock or must be reinstalled if handle would pull. Oh, that's cool. So everything in the plane's got this like honeycomb structure for strength but keeping it light. Oh, yeah, that's what it looked like. What's that say? Douglas part number, serial number CAN639. So yeah, it sounds like a Canadian serial number. All these wires that would have controlled different parts of the aircraft. It's amazing, they look so fragile. As we far too often see, it's the rich and powerful that get away with murder and by committing crimes that any normal person would not be able to get away with. I thoroughly recommend if you want to know more about this then you should investigate the link that I'm sharing with you now.